Good on them. Hey, everybody. <sighs> Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, Between the Rolls, where we talk a little bit about what's going to come up, a lot about what happened last week, and then we talk about something completely random. I am Kyle. I'm going to be your host again tonight because I don't remember anything that actually happens other than the cred stuff. And even then, I try and put it as far out of my mind as <laughs> possible uh, the moment well, I say something. And then I don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, sure. He's probably thinking of it constantly between sessions, you know, trying to cook up more ways to fuck us over. <laughs> No, I have actually, actually I have successfully separated myself and been like, all right, this is my prep week for the Thirsty Thursday group, and this is my oh, prep week. And uh, so far, it's been going slightly better. Uh, uh, oh, good. But we don't have to talk about that. We're here to talk about other things. Uh, tonight, I am joined by the ever-present on every single session of every single uh, show we have either in person or being spoken about. Uh, in... We have David. Hey, David. How's it going? Hey, hey Kyle. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, uh, I don't know it, where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going great. Hi, I'm David. Uh, you can usually find me here on Between the Rolls on, on most Tuesdays. Well, let's be honest, every Tuesday. But, you know, you want to take my spot, just let us know i'm sure they'll love a break please, from this please. just like please please do it uh i also play zadar in the cacophony uh campaign slash soap opera and also i play in the calamity campaign i play ingve and crow on the b side so that's it you usually find me in a one shot i was actually in a one shot this past saturday so and yeah we'll talk about that We'll talk about that. The other person I want to introduce, uh, she is too good for the rest of us, which is yeah. why she started her own Twitch mini channel. A... No, that... and is now uh, talking... streaming other. Uh, she's games. a metal women celebrity. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, yes. it's like come she's, on. She's up there, and you know, My at her age, right over there. it's finally, finally good that she achieved something. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it was certainly going to be too late for Carol. Why don't hey. you introduce yourself and give a little bit more about details? Oh, God. So, hi, everyone. My name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter who, like the medals he's talking about, I went to ReaperCon and got two silver medals, which is what I expected. Ooh. It's really, really hard to get a gold. You got to be like one of the world's best painters to get that level. So, I was thrilled. Um, and it's a pretty big painting competition. So um, get great feedback, great classes. And yes, I started a mini painting stream, which really should have nothing to do with a and d stream. But who knows? Maybe I'll start running d, &D on. on here. If I do that, it won't compete with this for sure. Considering uh, that I harass you on your mini painting <laughs> about Fred things, I think oh. it counts towards it. No, I love, I love, actually, I love it when you show up and we talk cred. I really, I really do. I love to talk about cred. Um, well, you'll have but, a chance tonight. I know. We'll see if I remember what the hell happened. But oh, but so my stream, by the way, uh, my channel is muses underscore touch, like my uh, Twitter handle. And I run, a, I have a mini painting stream where I paint. Well, here's what I'm painting right now. Let's see. I'm painting. Oh, oh, oh. I'm really Ooh. actually, let's see if I can get her to focus. I don't know if it's going to focus. Oh, it's not going to focus. Oh, yes, there it, it is. is. Oh, for there it second. is. There it there is. There it is. That's what I'm nice. painting right now. Unfortunately, she's not watching the stream, so she actually just showed you the pedestal that it sits exactly. on. Exactly. Oh, that's a gorgeous pedestal. <laughs> Wait, oh, shoot. It, is that the truth? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you watching the stream? Of course I'm not watching the stream. I remember, I remember Otherwise, I'd see all the comments and I'd overthink. I mean, it was right in front of my face, so I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure I'd get on there. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I'm high, doing. But... I'll be... Uh, I'll be on tomorrow night at 8.30. But yeah, I've been a busy, busy person. I have lots of games and there's another, I have a Starfinder podcast I do a roll in and, and uh, it in. all sorts of fun called Hex Grid Heroes, where you can download fine podcasts like, like the one here too. 
I'm pretty sure we can be downloaded wherever fine podcasts can be. Do you want to give the spiel tonight? Uh, no, no, no. It no. just happened to roll right into that, actually. It does roll right into that. And, you know, if you do click on the link, you don't want to see our faces, but want to listen to our sultry voices as we yes, say. Yes, that's the best voice. Wonderful things. <laughs> and we should bill it under ASMR, you know? Uh, oh, absolutely. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Plus, you wouldn't have the issues of cameras going in and out of focus. So let's see if that worked. It did. Anyway, guys, you can follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a little bit of our YouTube archives. If you want to talk D&D with us, you can also hit us up on our Discord. Talk uh, if you nerdy want to, join... to us. Talk nerdy to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the curtains down the basement floor. Roll those D4s. Tell I'm go. screaming for more. <laughs> uh, and I think we uh, I have been sued. We just got so sued by We're going to shut down now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My very first concert was Poison. So uh, maybe they'll be nice to us. Nice. Nice. <laughs> maybe CC DeVille will pull up in his DeVille and deliver the subpoena. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we do have open uh, one shots. If you're a forever DM, you can go ahead and uh, email us at mhobo right. at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter. If you're a forever DM, you automatically get a seat if you're brand new to our show. If you're not, then you're put on the back burner. But you will always replace David because we are always trying to replace David as much as possible. And so. <laughs> Just... Uh, as oh, Carol yeah. said earlier, we do have a podcast. If you only want to listen yeah. to us, not like a look at us, uh, we also have a cool, awesome store. Uh, my mother-in-law just recently purchased oh. my birthday gift from the store. Uh, Another ah. friend. Oh, oh, do you have? I wonder it? if I can. I have the sweatshirt. I have the the cast sweatshirt though. I don't know if I can get ah, it on okay. there. But... I, I, there we go. I, there, you go. Hey, yeah. there you go. There you go. I mean, yeah. no one else saw that, but we did. Oh, but we shut did. up! It's right where my face was. Exactly. Oh, god damn it! What did I do to my arm? Oh, Carol, come on! I that was your mini painting your pain arm. Oh no. no, no, that's my left. That's that's the one that holds him. I've had something going on with my left oh. arm lately. It's really hurting. It's from the mouse. I got also a bruise that's like further down. I don't know if something burst and the blood's just sounds like you rolled a natty one on an acrobatics check. You know how? Oh, I don't even. I don't even. You know how you avoid that, Carol? How? Go to Dirty Dog Dice and get yourself (laughs) some. No, they're that don't roll natural ones. It's not Dirty Dog Dice. Get the freaking title rights. Pirate Dog Dice. I have Jesus, not done man. that in a long time. You keep screwing. No, once, I think you. Once, yeah, once said you, it's been uh, uh, you, almost a year. I think at this point. You call them that all the time as a I joke, used to. and now I you're agree. like freaking stuck in your brain. That's the name. It's now, pirate, now it's a thing. So <laughs> it's pirate dog dice, and you can pirate find them on dice. Twitter. And they don't roll natural ones unless. You, you want them ones. to. Yeah, exactly. You always want them to. Right. Uh, and then thanks to our other sponsor, Oddfish Games. If your game stinks, go ahead and pick up some of those adventure scents. You can smell like an old library, uh, rubber on a hot asphalt road, or putrid sewers, because that's what we no all want to be reminded of, of, is just how putrid those sewers are. Uh, they are also doing sewers. a Kickstarter of how to RPG with your cat. They are 100% funded. What? Good for them. A lot of cat people out there. (laughs) It's a cool concept. I mean. Yeah. And it only gets better. Keep going. Just because they're at 100% doesn't mean they have 100% of their stretch goals realized. And Come on. You want to get a part of those stretch goals. Those are some. Like cat scratch fever, man. Nice and perks. Do, you, do you know you can get like a suit of armor for your cat if it's unless it's gone? I don't know if it's gone, but they had a pledge level where they have suits of armor to put on your cat. It was really cool looking armor, really nice actually looking armor. You can get plate mail armor, you could get banded armor, they make leather armor. The leather is actually made from cats, so you know what? it's all it's nice. all good God. there. Uh, and then, of course, awful. a single breastplate with your cat's uh, How to RPG insignia on the front. 
it is mwah, simply wonderful. Go ahead, fund those stretch goals. Get there's that number for your cat. There's a dice jail too. There, there's something called the cat size dice jail. Yeah, that's really cat cool. Cat size dice jail. I think it's got a cat above it, you know, when you put your dice in the jail below when your dice are bad, which I probably should get it. I probably should get one. You probably should. Just you probably point should. You have because it. my dice really belong in a fucking dice jail. They really do. Uh, guys, so as far as news has happened, uh, gosh, we have the calamity, not calamity, cacophony. Uh -huh. <laughs> no cacophony. cacophony. Are we done with cacophony? Not no. yet. Not, not yet. yet. Oh, we were just unable to do cacophony this Thursday. Mm -hmm. Nothing this Thursday. The DM needs a break. Uh, he is old, old man. Wait, he really? You're not. No, cacophony sleep. is this coming week. Cacophony is playing this week. Well, I just said cacophony no! this Thursday, and then you lied oh, okay. to me, David. Yeah, no, oh cacophony. No, you said it. Is it over? And I was just like, no, not yet. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I said. Well, we have this Thursday cacophony. You're like, mm -mm. You shook your I'm head. like, oh, is it over? <laughs> yeah, that's true. No. And Maybe, I'm like, oh, confusing him, David. No. Okay, so it's an off week and we're not having no, we are we're having, having it. We're having cacophony it. Thursday, eight o'clock Eastern time. Mm. Is it the end of cacophony? What do they do with all these lob tubes? We'll have to find out. Saturday is an open. What's one in shot. the box? What's in the box? Is it, the, is it the same box that uh, showed up in campaign one? Shh, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Carol. <laughs> Carol, calm, calm yourself Dexter, down. Point Dexter, uh, Doc Amell knows what's in the box. Point Dexter. That was not his name. It was De Dex Dexter Doc Amell. Dexter, but his full name is Point oh, Dexter. Point Dexter. Doc Dexter? Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah. What is it? Dewey's grandfather? Dewey's grandfather. Dewey's grandfather. Uh -huh. That's so cool. We're getting distracted. Carol together, wants folks. to talk. So let's go ahead. One shot Saturday, but last week on Thursday, oh, yeah. the start of Gen Con, we had the greatest return uh, of a campaign ever. Yeah. Not really, but uh, we certainly did return to cred in a fashion. Uh, I could talk about it, but I don't remember what happened. So Carol, oh, what please. happened on Thursday? I'm 50 and senile. Do you think I remember what happens? <laughs> I'm I kind of remember. Cena. So, no. So, uh, I remember we basically got up in the morning and we went to go see um, Lothar. Oh, let's see if I can remember names because my name, I think. So, we went to go see the captain of the guard, Lothar, who wanted to see us and basically, although. Captain of the guard? Captain, well, he was. He's been fired. <gasps> probably for. You know, I want your badge and your axe because he was because he thinks something's going on with the ghouls. Um, there's an a, there's a treaty in place with the, between this whole clan of ghouls and the ghouls in Cthulhu type games are not like just your standard ghouls that you think a lot of D and D games. These are intelligent, really intelligent uh, with personalities and such. They're just ghouls. There was something's going on with the ghouls where they're breaking the treaty and taking townsfolk and using them as a food supply. So whoa, either whoa, 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 there's no proof of that. We found two of their larders. So yes, there is. Oh, those I, could have been two random ghouls. No, go on, go on. No, no, what no, 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 no. So basically, he's. Uh, he sent us after a couple people who went missing and to investigate the ghouls. So last session was basically we we were investigating. Um, we went to oh god, um, oh I'm gonna forget I forget the name. I, I one was a priest. One was a priest. One was a priest of the light. Brother Mateo. Mateo. I was gonna say Matthias, but I was close. It's the other one that I can remember. I remember because with like an S. The Scaries. I, thank you. That's one I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. And then there was also the Scaries. The husband and wife both went missing. The wife went missing first. And then the husband went missing like what, last night? The yeah, night you know what I find is strange? It's like you guys think it's the ghouls, but both of those people were last seen with Bran. It's well, yeah, but there was also the whole one. There's also when we went into the house, 
there was that hole, there was a hole in the floor where the dirt had been dug up and re put back, repacked back in, just like in the jail cell. So, and we know that was ghouls because we fought them. So we're pretty sure, I mean, uh, and then we went in the bedroom, there was a horrific sight, which I fucking failed a dread roll. I met two dread folks, two more, and then the insanity starts. Um, let's hope, I have a bad that won't feeling. Be much longer. I know I have a really bad feeling because we're investigating with no downtime. And the only way you can get rid of dread in this game is with pretty much with downtime. I don't know if there's any spells that take care of that. I would assume restoration does, but, uh, but as of right now, the only way we've been able to get rid of dread is through downtime and doing something to mentally gain control of the situation, I guess you could say. So, but the horrific site basically went in there and saw, basically there was a human's worth of blood all over the place, the sheets, the floors. It was pretty ghastly. And I think by, so we said, we did a lot of looking around, uh, long story short. And so now I believe where we left off, we were about to head to the cemetery that was next door which has an entrance way into the nearest set of lava tubes, which we suspect obviously there's one going right below the house uh, because that's where they tunneled up from. Sure. It was a good episode. It was a, I, I, I love, I really love playing in this game. Um, I'm not a huge Cthulhu nut either. And, but I really loved this. What's up, David? Yeah. Does lesser restoration get rid of dread? No, I didn't say I meant restoration, like a full restoration or a greater. Might get I, rid of I was dread. just curious if a lesser will do it. I don't think so. There's there's a list of conditions lesser will deal with, and I'd have to look, but I don't think whatever dread falls under dread's kind of its own thing anyway. So, I mean, yeah. I mean that be that might be a GM call, or it might be something in the actual book, which I probably at some point should read. Nah, don't bother. We have the thing. Sandy Peterson. We just make it up as we. Yeah, exactly. We, we actually have the Can Sandy Cute Peterson Cthulhu book here, and I could probably read all about what the dreamers actually are, which is a pretty sure Kyle has now. What? Calm down. What? I didn't even think of that too when I when I wrote the backstory of my character. Uh, I like the I like the little reveals too of everyone's backstory. You're doing a really good job of integrating what everybody. Told you, and oh, we had and said, and we have a new character. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Who we don't know anything about, but he is, except for the fact that he is a cartographer and a scout, and I think a a rogue. You think he's rogue class? Uh, uh, works for uh, Commander Corwell. Loth, well, yeah, Lothar. Oh not, no, the actual commander. The actual. The commander. asshole that fired Lothar. Not the asshole who fired. Oh no, no, you're right. He's the oh Brand's Brand's brother. Brand's brother. Half brother. Yes. Half brother. Mm -hmm. Wait, half brother, right? I don't think they were full blood what brother. Don't you remember? Oh my goodness. Ooh. I know, I told you. I've got I've got notes I can always go back to if I need it. But they're on the shut let you well, you can't see it on there because the screen's been cropped out, but these two can. It's right behind me on that the bottom of the shelf. I can see the book from here. But I'm going to, yeah, no, I mean, also some of those reveal, like, yeah, the half brother thing that she was there. So I do know about it, but yeah, not, I try, when I take notes, it's from her point of view. So if she wasn't there, it's not in the notebook. It's not like somebody else who's writing every freaking thing down. <laughs> yes, as years. notable uh, things go, uh, we uh, did lose Caitlin, uh, both in Kentucky oh, yeah. and in Cred due to uh, her going back to school. It was her birthday uh, uh, last Thursday. Uh, happy birthday again, Caitlin, belated. Um, that narration at the beginning, too. I totally forgot the narration. I mean, well, I forgot to mention it, but yes, you had this whole narration of uh, a flashback mm -hmm. of, Cle yeah, Cleo, who I think, I and think you may keep touch, her around. Uh, touch of everyone else, actually. Touch of Anja, is that what we're saying? There's a little bit of Anja backstory in that a narration. Little, a couple of Anjas, actually. But I think I whoa. think I think Anja's in big trouble, is what I think. 
Uh, I think I don't think a mother's gonna mother who's the leader of the cult, uh, at least the sect. I'm I, I'm leaving cell sect whatever yes, I so i mean i left i'm leaving details about the cults up to you whether or not there there's more sex of them or you know because andrew wouldn't necessarily know that she just she was rather insulated um <laughs> but yeah i i oh here's what i was gonna say about cleo I think, I suspect Cleo may not have left the island and if Kyle really wanted to, Cleo could be a potential thorn in the side of the party and the side of Anja because she's out for power and the would cult Caitlin is giving power. Would that to you? Yes. Yes, she would. Yes. Oh, I mean, and not... I've maybe already I'm, spoken oh, to Oh, Carol, the bus is coming. Yeah. Bush. <laughs> I, oh, I, I totally. Well, the thing with this, though, I don't think it's hard for Mother to figure out who sent the troops in after I disappeared. Mother probably probably knows uh, the reason why the, the cult was blown up was because I ratted on them. So and she's coming to the. Oh, yeah. The whispers, the whispers, uh, the, the old, uh, talk Bran overheard. The mother, stupid- mother. Twenty-two passive perception. <laughs> Mo- I'm doing that laugh on behalf of DJ, by the way, because yeah. he would totally laugh at that. Uh, yeah, we had uh, what's it, the zoo, zoogs? That was something from uh, dreams type stuff. And there was a course saying someone said mother was coming, or mother mother was coming back to the island. It's like of like going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm gonna be so fucked. Awesome. I can't Um, wait to see how it plays out. If you blind him or you deaf him, his passive perception goes down. (laughs) So just remember that. Yeah, no, no. I was remembering the entire time. I'm just like, all right, this is a dim room and that goes down by five. All right, he's back (laughs) out in the sunshine. That's back up to five. Yeah, you got to mess with it like that. Change his environment. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's okay. It still means he's that much ahead of the rest of us. And we're really going to be. I mean, he'll have a chance when the rest of us don't mm-hmm. with passives. So, so. as I was uh, uh, wrapping up, uh, uh, we had to say goodbye to Caitlin. We say yeah. hello to Jake, who is playing Merrick Miss Meadow, a cartographer who's been on the island, who's been hired by the Arul Katan military, the occupying military force. And now he's doing some stuff under the table for Lothar. So we're going to see how that turns out for him. Uh, and I want to say he did a great job uh, uh, as far as the investigation goes. Yeah. I have an interesting style. Uh, uh, and he was supposed to just asking the right questions to find the clue. Uh, uh, but what you guys missed was that there was a burnt woman's dress in the fireplace um uh, i'm not wasn't giving every freaking detail blood. no we saw that and that you have access to the tunnels at this point instead of the graveyard depending on where you eyes want oh right the that's right we were thinking of going through the the um going through the chimney there yeah there was that's a right. lot of stuff in that episode that well, i tried to make sure i included and it you was did. so fun listening to the players be all paranoid about what was this what was that who's the dark guy with the glowing red eyes in the jungle what's going on (laughs) here what's going on there uh but enough about that uh on friday we had our gen con offering uh where uh (coughs) off one of the investigations uh from the uh, uh iron dm that was the previous tuesday uh and he did an investigation did either of you happen to catch any of that no i know I was I too can't busy watch with his... other Gen Cons. I'll be I'm honest, so... uh, Gen Con I... uh, offering, as I'm aware of it, went off the road, uh, which is typical for any Gen Con. Uh, mm-hmm. They just sense that Frank is weak and they pounce on him and immediately send him off the rolls, rails. Uh, uh, but then that comes up to Saturday. Uh, we did not have Calamity. Um Mm-mm as there were calamitous uh, things happening to our players' lives, like their children getting older or in-laws visiting. That's calamitous indeed. Uh, So we instead had a one-shot. David, you were a part of that, the Jade Temple. Tell us what happened. 
the Jade Temple. Oh my gosh, what didn't happen? Oh man, I tell you. What do you mean? What was... didn't happen? I mean, no what? What nobody? Well, technically, no one died. Dex checks. That's what didn't happen. Dex checks. <laughs> I made the first one. <laughs> All right. Let me explain. Okay. So basically we, uh, this is the adventures of uh, Kalista, Gobi, Thumper, and Adam. Uh, we basically go out to investigate. Um, we're, we're hired. We're hired by the, the region, the, the royalty there to investigate uh, a town, which actually the regent was fond of and uh, heard many things that had historical value, had a temple and stuff like that. So we were sent to investigate because she was in, uh, the regent was answering a call for help that the village itself was being attacked by flying humanoids. So she assembled a team of intrepid adventurers and sent us into the fray. And basically that's where it starts. We emerge from the jungle uh, after about, about a few days trek. Uh, we arrive at the village. We're greeted at the village. There's a celebration. And it's just like, it was a strange celebration <laughs> because they were celebrating a victory uh, that of uh, a resolution for the problem that they already had. So yeah. we thought. No, so. no, not on your life. I didn't think that at all. Mm -mm. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, quite the party, you know, with, uh, yeah, flaming kobolds and stuff like that. So, flaming. that's be a great drink. Oh, flaming kobold. kobold. Yeah. Speaking of drinks, how'd that drink go for you, Carol? <laughs> Remember you got your constitution oh, yeah, check? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the local drink of choice, you know, from the village people, I had to throw that joke in there. You got to watch the episode. It was funny. Uh, yes. So the local drink, uh, some of us partake had partaken some of it. Some of us didn't. Those that took a little bit more of it had to do constitution checks. And with the constitution checks, it was because there was cobra venom inside the, the drinks oh. themselves. That so. I did, I made the follow-up save. So mm -hmm. actually the reality, yeah. all I had was one. All, I think the two of us, we only had one. And I think of what you're right, the, it was for the- uh, I think Thumper had a couple, but Thumper's constitution is up there. Yeah, that's a true. Folk. So, but uh, anyway, so yeah, as the celebration is going on, we're wondering why the hell are we here? Uh, yeah, party gets busted and interrupted by two giant flying apes crash the party and yes of course the initiative rolls start to fly so we had our first encounter with that yeah after successfully rooting these uh these um two apes whatever uh yeah the council rep uh, villagers r realizes okay <laughs> we still have a problem so so they send us the a team to go investigate the temple because that's where they su suspect the humanoids were coming from because that's where they were seeing the direction that they were flying. Am I right? Am I right? You know what? You're wrong. It wasn't Thumper that did the drink because Rob just posted Thumper doesn't drink alcohol. It's bad for reptiles. Oh, oh okay. So Thumper. I sure yeah. wasn't you. I thought it was you that had the other. It was the other person that drank. I, I had a drink. Yeah, see, and you and I but had my constitution a drink was very it? high. Plus, I had less yeah. restoration. Yeah, you so. were you were you were good. I mean, you were good. I mean, yeah. I Frank my, didn't give us a chance to let me restore you, but you no, know. I was I didn't take any I didn't take any uh I wasn't you wasn't poisoned. So, no, no, I was fine. I didn't take any, I wasn't taking any penalties either. So it didn't matter. Okay. I just felt a little queasy. That's all. And Thumper was the one, uh, it was the night's rest. That's what oh, you're okay. thinking of. That's it. That's it. Anyway, so <laughs> let's cut to the chase. Okay. So we go investigate the temple as we're in the temple and all that. We uh, check out uh, the temple itself. It uh, After a perilous cro crossing on a bridge, <laughs> had a couple of failed checks with that. Uh, yeah, we discovered the temple. It's actually embedded in a mountain and the opening is giant uh, serpent head is the entrance. So as we go in, of course, it's your standard ruined temple jungle temple and all that 
moldy, musty, uh, water dripping somewhere. There's a water feature. So uh, dark corners. So within these dark corners. How much we, time did you spend on the water feature? Quite a bit. Good. Good. All right. Quite a bit. It's a really oh, yeah, nice yeah. and really sure. bad ideas too. Everyone was like feature. paranoid. Well, and then there was really nothing in there. So there never yeah. is. Yeah, we uh, we ended up dispersing the water <laughs> in a particular Carrie fashion. Carrie thunderwaved it. Uh huh. Yep. Which was and not with, a bad. Plan. With that, almost brought the temple down on top of us. Uh, we were also being raised by uh, flying kobolds. They were uh, up in in the ledges of the temple and all that, and they attacked us. So after a battle fighting with them, they tried to flee like through up through the. Uh, through an opening in the top of the temple and Carrie, man, she was on the ball. Boom. She cast web. Got them all. <laughs> we just burned them alive. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, yeah. Nothing like a little murder, folks. But anyway. So, further investigation uh, through the temple. We find secret rooms. Then we find this opening onto what appears to be a precipice with columns and things like that with a dead goat you know, that was rotting. So after some investigations, stuff we like knew that. that was there for something. It was there for something. We knew so something was coming to eat that. Basically what we ran into was it's called the Jade Jump Temple because there's a Jade Dragon. So, yeah. So as you can guess, that was the big bad. And yeah, that fight was pretty intense. Um, uh, you know, God, uh, Kalista, I mean, amazing fighter and priest. That was good. Yeah, was playing a, really a war call. priest. So. Uh, <laughs> Rob's, Rob Stumper, the, the lizard folk barbarian. Awesome, awesome. And Carrie was good with some control spells and stuff like that. But unfortunately, we're fighting a freaking dragon, folks. Never you can imagine how that gets there. And we're third level. We did okay. We, we, we all, we that wasn't okay. what took us down there. If you that's not what took us down. No. The dragon no. didn't take us down. No. No, no, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> You'll just have to watch the episode. Oh, us. come on. You're <laughs> not gonna say what happened at the very end. Okay, the very end. We slay the dragon, but the temple is coming down, folks. So yeah, we had to do, we do a series of dex checks to get out of there, and only two of us made it. So. Oh, Bob, but don't gloss over. You know why I didn't make it? Because I went back to try to save. Go, what's the name? Gobi? Gobi, right? Gobi. I went back. Mm -hmm. Basically, I made the first dex check and I could have left and said, fuck you. But she failed. I think she, she critically failed. She mm -hmm. failed though. And I was well, like, well, yeah. So I was like, shit. So I, I said, what would it take? Could I take her along, grab her and take her along? And then Frank said, make another dex check, which was fair. I thought that was very well, I thought it was really well ruled. And then I rolled badly. So <sighs> we both got crushed. I mean, thankfully, the, the healer was still alive, which would be you. Uh, you know, I'm playing a war priest. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I had healing spells, but I was like, you're the Can't healer. Cast them when you're unconscious. <laughs> nope. So basically, it, it, it would have worked out fine. But he cut the show right at that point. But oh, we yeah. would have been dug out. It would have been yeah, fun. we wouldn't have left Carrie's character behind. It's just the temple was coming down, so we were. All, there was a chance we were all going to get killed. So, hey but. Rob, we weren't dead. <laughs> he said he <laughs> wanted to dig out the bodies and eat them. Yeah, but we weren't By dead. By the time they got to you, you probably would have been dead. Well, speaking of eating, Rob, since you're watching, Rob's here. Thumper's character was guy was amazing. So he, I mean, <laughs> Rob's character, Thumper, yeah, his big claim to fame, he ate a dragon. Yeah, during the the course of the fight, he bit the dragon and actually did damage. So yeah. that's it. You know, he took a bite that's his of, battle crack. Yeah, he took a bite out of the dragon and took actually ate it. Dragon. Yep, good so. for you. That was awesome. So was anyway, that's the Jade Temple episode. So check it out. It's it's a fun episode. It was fun. Yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun to play and I'm pretty sure it was fun to watch. Yeah. The amount of failures that went on, failure is always fun to watch, right? Oh, oh yeah. Fun to watch. yeah. You all love cred. There's so much fail in that, too. There is. Not oh, enough. Right. Otherwise, you'd all be insane at this point. Uh, 
after Saturday, we had Sunday with the Margu 2 side campaign. Yeah, um, they get to you that. guys know what's going on over there? No, we were told Margo. to go off. It's also, we have like time. It, it's after we have to get to the topic. Eh, it'll be a short time. But it's, well, did you watch it? I, uh, I got the synopsis from uh, from Frank. Uh, yeah, the Margu uh, 2 campaign uh, is circles around the party. They're, they're, let's just say they were let go from an adventure company or whatever for younger hires or something like that. <laughs> so anyway, there is something called the Garnet Trail or something like that. That's like the, the Silk Road or something. But anyway... They start an adventuring company with that. They get kicked out of a city that they're in called Faust. And basically that's how the this campaign or whatever is kicking off. So definitely, I'm just paraphrasing folks, but check out the episode. The Sunday crew, always funny. Always, always funny. So they're the they're the original murder hobos. So there you go, folks. You gotta well, check them out. Yeah, they are. So. They are. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was last, or this was last week. This week we already talked about. So let's get on to the topic tonight. Let's all hitch on to this wagon of what? Oh, we're talking about vehicles tonight: war wagons, uh, air blimps, or Surrey with the fringe on top. Uh, Sorry. Oh my God! There needs to be a game where we have that. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Magical. Right. Can you put one in on the island? In cred? Uh, hey, that that dandy you know gold might have one. <laughs> one on there. Oh my gosh, we forgot to talk about Upton. Upton was, Upton was awesome. I you know that's right. And yeah, well, I meant that's why I sort of mentioned the ghouls. I know I didn't I, I didn't want to mention everything, guys. Okay. Yeah, I was that's her right. excuse. Yeah. I'm I'm 75 years old and senile. I I just didn't want to mention everything that happened in that episode. <laughs> That's uh, it. Although although my husband was wondering because he knows the characters. If Upton was is uh, Upton's a character from the book, right? Is is a character because he's like there is a there is a ghoul character in the mythos that is named. It's more than Upton though. That's like his middle name. I don't know. I was just in my head. I, Upton always was awesome. come up yeah, with, with Upton par- was awesome. always come up with parody song parodies for things for D and and I was thinking Uptown Girl, so I was thinking Uptown, Uptown Ghoul. Ghoul, oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> ah, ah, that'd be so cool. Uptown oh, if I was talented, Uptown I would write a parody, Ghoul. but I, but I'm not. He's a so. living in his top hatted world. There you go. Hey, <laughs> this shit just writes itself. So. Okay. It Speaking does. of writing itself, let's write the you show. You mean writing <laughs> itself? There we go. Oh. Hey. Although oh, it's boy. not about horses. The puns are just gonna. Come. It is not about mounts. It is about the vehicles themselves. Right. So uh, let's go ahead and just hear some of your favorite vehicles and what do you really love about them? I mean, honestly, I'll go first. I love the lightning rails of Eberron. Mm-hmm. Which is why I have several uh, 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 written adventures and one shots that involve a lightning rail because I love it so much. Uh, hopefully, they get better than the first one I did. But uh, I don't know. There's something fancy about a magical train uh, in a world that you know usually doesn't have trains because we've got magic. Uh, so uh, let's start off with David. What uh, what are your some of your favorite uh, uh, vehicles that you well, had a chance to ride in, or something you would like? To well, there was a whole edition of D and D after a vehicle. <gasps> what is it? Spell jammer. Spell jammer. Spell yeah, jammer. spell jammers are awesome. <laughs> yes, an uh, interdimensional, you know, traveling ship. Oh my god, that is just amazing to sail the astral seas. I mean, that is just that's just an amazing. Now, have vehicle. you had uh, as a player or as a DM? Have you run one, or have you ridden in a spell jammer? No, but in Cacophony, we, want- we find one. <laughs> we find a spell jammer. Oh um, wow! I, yeah, I missed that one. Oh yeah, we, cool. found, we found a spell spell jammer, a crashed uh, spell jammer. So 
Nice, Frank. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's really cool. All right. Well, Carol, how about you? Oh, my God. Uh, I was thinking about it. It's like, I don't have a ton of experience with, with vehicles, but then I, the more I think about it, the more it's like, eh, I got more experience than I thought. I mean, pretty much they're all cool. I mean, it, you know, I I haven't met a vehicle that I didn't like um, from the carriage that we had running around in Chris Strad. Uh, we had, of course, my captain, my pirate captain ship, the Sea Stinger. Cause that, yeah, she's a captain of a ship. I'm amazed. I'm still amazed. I'm a captain of anything in, in a game. Um, let's see. I will go with Frank's balloon because that was such an epic episode of uh, cacophony. Uh, it wasn't a balloon, Carol. It was, it was an airship. It was an airship. Was it full fledged? I remember it, it had was a an balloon. airship. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I yeah. remember it had a balloon at the top of it. Uh-huh. Um. But I lo- but the neat thing about that was the different mechanics. You actually all the things a lot. Maybe the carriage not so much, but a lot of these have mechanics that are associated with it. So uh-huh. like um, with the airship, it was the mechanics of are you going to fall out? You know of the weather conditions and things like that. With the ship, and I also, as you all know, play that other system uh, called Starfinder. So there, oh, of course, oh, are Starfinder. space interesting spaceships mm-hmm. and they have a whole combat system uh a lot of people find it's kind of boring i mean it, and i kind of get it because you basically you pick a role as one of the the crew members and you just go around you basically keep doing the same thing so i can understand how some people think it's tedious but i enjoy it i mean if you're good at role playing it's it's easy enough to flavor things up too um but still, like, you know, when we're on our pirate ship and we have had, we've had, we have mechanics where we fight other ships. So, and actually one of the parts of that, that's Pathfinder, by the way, one of the parts of that AP was you actually do a sailing race. So there is all sorts of ship mechanics in play there. Um, you know, you have to make skill checks to keep the ship go- going and you have to navigate and you don't really have to shoot anything, but we do have cannon. So that does come into play once in a great while. But it's cool. Yeah. I mean, said so I haven't met a vehicle I haven't liked yeah. because usually they've all got their interesting set mechanics and ways to, they, they impact the game too. They're an environment. That does kind of lead to my other question I was about to ask, which was, you know, uh, uh, we have these favorite vehicles. What are your least favorite vehicles or what are your least favorite things about vehicles? I myself was going to mention Starfinder, and while they have spaceships, that most people tend to find it rather dull because yeah, that's what there's I not a lot of pizzazz to it. Uh, so what are the uh, downsides of uh, vehicles in general? Uh, Carol, uh, why don't you continue on talking? I don't know. I mean, you pretty much I mean, summed up there. I mean, I did sort of sum it up with, with the Starfinder spaceships. I think said it can get a bit tedious uh, because you're basically you fly, you do flavor it with with role play. And that does actually help. But I mean, if you get on a string of bad dice rolls and God knows, I, I said, I remember one night me and my husband were in a game and with a couple others. And Carol, Carol, we couldn't find. Hey, 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 hey! No, it was a we Starfinder game. It was a fishbowl. No, 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 no. So basically, uh, basically, everybody who was shooting, my husband was one of the ones that was on cannon. There was another one. There was like two or three people that were shooting, and they could not roll for shit. That battle went on for like I think at least an hour. And it was getting desperate at the point. I was the pilot. I remember that. And I was basically, we stuck all our remaining shields on the front. And I was backing up every turn to keep the thing in front of us. We won, but it was it was the closest I think ever again to losing a ship in the game. But it, yeah, but after a while, it does. It starts getting a little tedious. And that might be, that might be my least favorite thing when it comes to vehicles. Uh, Is David? that particular? How about you? Well, you mentioned the lightning rails, <clears throat> uh, the trains of Eberron, but yeah. I mean, there there are several like large vehicles that are part of different 
uh, parts of campaigns and things like that throughout D&D. Like one of the ones with Ben Richten's guide to um, Ravenloft that they came out with, uh, it, one is an actual um, uh, domain of dread and it's called the Morning Rail. And basically what it is is a ghost train and all that. So yeah, that's pretty good. You can have a whole adventure on top of that one. Then there's one that's uh, a riverboat. Uh, travels the the river of the mists and stuff like that called the um rain dancer or something like that and it's a priestess or whatever that runs this this great river boat and she sings out on the front to call the damn souls or whatever to to come and you know board the boat and stuff like that and it just drifts you know between the the domains of dread and stuff like that so it's pretty cool. So, I mean, vehicles as a theme in uh, D&D doesn't just have to be like a conveyance. It can actually be a setting. Yeah. Um, but as far as conveyances go, I mean, you got ships, uh, Ghost of Saltmarsh. Uh, with that, the whole back end of the book is about ships and upgrades to ships and things like that. That's one of the things that I like about the vehicles and all that. Because you can have them as like a character in the book. They can have hit points. They can have, you know, different functions, legendary uh, actions and things like that. You know, like one of the things with South Marsh is, is when you go into South Marsh, there's a shipwright that upgrades your ships. You can get dragon sails to give you uh, uh, fire protection and stuff like that. There's uh, even even sails or whatever uh, that increase your speed, always full of uh, wind and things like that. One of the things that I liked was a masthead. And the masthead actually casts like misty step for the entire ship. Oh. So if there's a blockade, you just misty I've step got, past it. I so. know our, well, our ship has an interesting um, figurehead on it. Uh, believe it. Tell. Uh, it's great for I believe, it gives us bonuses to ram another ship but also where I get to be the captain it also gives me the spell boss life so I get like temporary hit points off of it if I if I need it I haven't really thankful I'm playing a swashbuckler which is a very defensive character and I so I've been able to defend myself pretty good so I haven't really needed them thankfully but I think it's just it's really really cool. I, yeah, and just like that, my my sales are treated, um, and they give me a bonus to uh, the hell is it um, profession profe that profession sailing checks. You know, um, we found an uh, we found an anchor that basically acts like an immovable rod. Um, it really, cool. really cool. I, I, oh, one of the things there's also, well, this is not the ship itself, but this is a little piece of magic thing that's going to go on it. It's a ship in the bottle. And I've seen this pop up in Starfinder too, where you actually have a replica of your ship in a bottle. And when your ship takes damage, it actually goes instead to the ship inside the bottle. And That's it has, cool. it, it only works for so long. I mean, you can, you, you know, you can mend it. You can cast mending on it um to to restore it back to whole so it can take more damage but if it takes too much it'll break I like so it's that. really a cool little item and i said and they actually i know it came from pathfinder one from this i'm pretty sure it came from this particular uh, adventure path but they've co-opted and put into starfinder because i have come across that i am in starfinder it's like oh my god it's the ship in the bottle from <laughs> skull and shackles Nice. So a lot you of said cool that, lines. My first thought was that uh, you just store your ship in the bottle. That would be really cool too. Then you, you don't have to worry about barnacles. In case of emergency, break glass from an instant <laughs> ship. We gotta oh, get yeah. out of here. <laughs> oh, I know. You wouldn't have to worry about parking it. <laughs> Oh, imagine, you don't have to like, worry about somebody that taking water it over. That gets displaced though <laughs> when uh, you summon the ship back. And... <laughs> oh my! Yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be bad. 
you better want yeah and and you better hope that, like the bottle doesn't fall out of your pocket or something on on a land or you're gonna have a big problem oh my God, thieves stealing your boat right from <gasps> under that's true well that's what happened to captain jack right he hit well the black pearl was stolen and well, put to in be the fair, bottle. the black pearl wasn't in a bottle. It wasn't his it, the pearl <laughs> no, wasn't his that's originally. True. Oh, no, it wasn't, but it's kind of his. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. I mean, we're talking about this, and we're already talking about, you know, ships being these awesome, uh, not just ships, uh, vehicles Mm -hmm. in general, being these things that you upgrade, you can build magical items around. They can really become an integral, uh, uh, an integral, not integral. Integral. integral You you got it right. Part. Integral. Was Was it? Integral part. He's right. I said integral bowl. Yeah, integral. at the end. So I meant <laughs> All right. Welcome to the pronunciation show, folks. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I need more alcohol to keep doing this. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and that had none of it in there. No, how uh, these vehicles become integral parts of any campaign or any one shot. You can mm-hmm. uh, uh, turn. Uh, magic items and you can just add them onto these ships here um Mm -hmm. but uh what do you guys do uh uh, or what do you try and do to make when you're on a vehicle make it feel like it's absolutely unique if i want to call out uh something that i did that i felt like was that point uh was when you guys were on the hazel's folly in cred uh, we had just one evening where uh, Miss Sleepless Anja uh, was out and about <laughs> on the deck of the boat and she saw something in the water. And in that case, I was just like, what's a magical ocean scene that can make you feel like you're really on a ship? You look down in the water and there are these gigantic glowing jellyfish that are lighting up the ocean. I remember that. And I thought that was, you know... That's a great way to make it feel like, no, you are on a boat in the middle of the ocean or the claw coming up and dragging down the dead corpses into this unfathomless deep. Um, What do you guys do or what do you try to do as uh, uh, even as players to try and make a vehicle unique and to have that certain feeling of, oh, I'm not just on... Oh, I'm You're dying. <laughs> no dying on the show. No dying on the show. <laughs> I can lose my mind. I can't die on the show, unfortunately. What do you guys do to make a vehicle feel unique? You know, you're not just riding a horse now. You're in comfort. You're in style in a wagon. You're not flying on the back of an eagle. You're flying on an airship. What do you guys do to make it feel like that? Um, and let's go ahead and start with David this time. Steal what I'm saying. No, no, it it has nothing to do with that. Okay, one of the things that I did for my campaign uh, is that it's a it's a caravan. Basically, what it is, it's a series of wagons, and there's these tricked out wagons turned uh, caravan. One is uh, they were created by an artifact for purposes and you know you got the one that is like the pimped out luxury um you know carriage you know but it it also is like a uh oh what do they call it like a a pocket dimension on the inside so it's kind of like the TARDIS it's Mm. bigger on the inside so but the other thing that I did was I had uh a chef as one of the characters and all that so his carriage was a food truck. Mm-hmm. So as we're trekking along with this, I mean, it, it was the way that it felt was just like every time we stopped, it was like setting up a food truck for like, you know, for the meal and things like that. So, and it just made, it just made it nice, you know, to, to I mean, it was something of convenience for the characters that they could use. And, uh, you know, it kind of, I don't know. It it, it kind of made it easier too, and gave a feel of. It was like it was like what it was was like a respite from anything that happened nearby, anything that happened at night to their camp, or anything like that. the The vehicles just became part of of this caravan, and it gave that caravan 
feel, you know, so, but, uh, yeah, those, those were the two odd things that I had. I had a trucked out, uh, tricked out, uh, food truck <laughs> and a TARDIS carriage. So, but, uh, it gave that sense of, you know, motion continuity and all that as they were traveling, they were traveling along the sword coast and basically that's how that was set up. So. Okay. Uh, uh, Carol, what do you do to make a, a, a vehicle seem unique and to give that feeling to the players or what has a DM done for you that really did that? If you want to uh, brag about it, me some more, I'm okay. With no, no, I no. I mean, you used imagery, dude, so with, with your narration for it, and that was amazing. So, um, What I was going to say is it's pretty much sort of like, but I, to put it in more general terms, uh, it, to me, it's a lot of what you put inside that vehicle that makes it special, that makes it home. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a, basically a lot of these vehicles, that's your, that's your home. You know, that's, it's not just a convenience to shuttle you from one place to another. I mean, right, the carriage and Curse of Strad, not so much. But, he, but even then, you know, on the road, it was protection against the road. Now that I couldn't do a lot with, but some of the bigger modes of transportation, trains, I said, I, I realized, uh, I forget about your train that I blew up uh, in the one shot there. That was pretty cool too. Um like, but the, like the, so, uh, all right, to cut to it, uh, the, the, not so much my ship, although I've mentioned stuff on the, on the sailing ship that we've added, you know, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's really cool to, to get that censure on the open ocean and, uh, doing ship battles and things like that and boarding other ships. Uh, but, um, I will, I'll go with that. St- we'll go with star provider and I'll go with, uh, there's a ship that we are actually having repaired that's going to be our ship. And it's all the little stupid shit we're throwing in it, the little touches. So, like, we're going to have, like, uh, a, a, squid, um, a slushy machine in there. We're going to have, how was it? Oh, there was a bunch of hookahs, so we're going to keep one of those. Um, and it's, it's actually a gorgeous, aesthetically, it's really gorgeous, too. Um, uh, said just little things like that um, that give it flavor. Uh, trying to think of what else I've had on ships that are interesting. Those two are the inter- those two are interesting features. I don't remember what <laughs> I don't remember what else. Um, shit, I don't remember what else. I was gonna say I, I have another Starfinder game where where we, we've had ships before. Oh, I was going to say, actually, I can think of, I was not in this game, but I heard if DJ was in it and they basically turned the ship into an Oreo. It had two turret guns, top and bottom, I think. It, it basically, the crew quarters was in the middle and they took away, they took away almost everything else and all it was was guns and shields. Nothing could blow that ship by the water, though. It was like the most powerful thing in the sky. Wow. So... And I'm just imagining the Starfinder, those Eoxian ships. Yeah. Because it's driven by undead creatures. Yeah. They don't have the corpse fleet necessarily. So space is free to go in. There's no atmosphere in it. Because they don't breathe. They're dead. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The the corpse fleet uh, is pretty cool. Okay. But guys, that is pretty much the end of the show here. Let's go around. Final thoughts. uh, Vehicles. Uh, leave them in a ditch somewhere, sink them to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> uh, what's your preference, just uh, in general? I like, to, I'll, I like to use them so in, in settings and campaigns. So, I mean, or you can make them a campaign. I mean, I was thinking of a... It's a bad movie, but it's a good premise. Uh, mortal engines where entire cities are vehicles. You know? Oh, that was a Oh, that's a snow pier- snow piercer is another one I'm thinking of too because they're all piercer. on a train. With oh them. yeah, oh yeah. So those those are my th- final thoughts. I mean, it's just like you know, yeah, conveyance. You can make it your theme for your game. I mean, so I say right. do it. Yeah, Carol. Final thoughts. On final thoughts. Vehicles. Okay, so first of all, yeah, yeah, I think that they definitely have their place. They definitely can add a lot of flavor to your campaigns. 
Um, but I'm going to add so that I don't pull off what he wrote there. Uh, Rob posted, he has a really cool concept on the subject trains. I have a hippomotive train pulled by horses that walk on treadmills on an engine car. And he nice. said he straight up stole the idea from an author like a good DM. It had a can- can- canopy and an envelope. I'm not sure what that means. Um, oh, what? It's an envelope. Envelope. Well, I say envelope. Con- this is the pronunciation show. Come yeah. on. Yeah, whatever. I say tomato, envelope. tomato, potato, potato. Yeah, that pretty much is. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty interesting concept of a train too. Um, I said right. I remembered you had had the train that that I blew up. Um, and of course, Frank has reminded you. Of, said you clearly you've forgotten about the No More wagon at the Dingling Brothers event. Uh, no, I, I think I nice. remember that. I uh, did not get mentioned get here with uh, with it, a goblin. It didn't get me- it didn't get mentioned here, so I want to mention. I want to make sure I mention it on here. Um, so we vehicles seem to show up a lot in. In Frank's game, so and I think you know I'm all for it. I said it flavors the game. Uh, it's Frank's another piece of environment. What He's Frank's a gearhead. a gearhead? Another it's all about that. those magical items and those ships, and I'm all about screw That's your it. magical item. <laughs> <laughs> so why we don't have any in cred? Uh, I don't think we have a magic ish item. Yeah, magic ish item. You haven't asked about it yet. That's the fun part for me. <laughs> Uh, but guys, uh, I'm not going to go through the spiel again tonight. Hit us up, Gmail, uh, mhobo Inc., or on Twitter if you want to hop in on one of our games. One Shot is on Saturday. If you want to listen to our audio or you want to hit our stores, we got links around here below. Uh, otherwise, you know, follow us on Twitch and Twitter. Um, and then, of course, I want to thank our wonderful sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, proof that you can turn a dog turd into a D20. No, you uh, can't. And while it rolls but well, if it ever breaks open, it's going to smell awful. And that's where Adventure Sense from Oddfish Game comes in. Because uh, you are want to get rid of that smell, you'll cover it up. Just shove some of those smelly pellets up your nose. Uh, I can't recommend that personally enough. Just make sure you don't do it with putrid sewers. You'll have, you know, tavern in one nostril and uh old library and the other it's great to work around this is tavern this is actually welcoming you tavern. got the tavern you know i what? did i did i got two really tavern. great you know what i, I also aztec temple and vampire lair so. i also stole i also stole dj's that got sent here because he never took it so i have ottoman harem too which smells good uh and keep an eye out for carol's fence post what uh, yeah lair. no and it's not me, Carol. It's somebody a else they made up. Uh, inspired adventure. Wow. Uh, <laughs> just make sure you go over to House Sorry. RPG with your cat over at Kickstarter. Good. It is one of the stretch goals. Uh, Carol's the clap fence post. Uh, oh, it'll be an interesting thanks. smell. A mix of cedar and a touch of fishiness to it. Um, lead paint. <laughs> lead You're paint. terrible. God, you are terrible. Guys, that is the end of the show tonight. Go ahead and wave, and we'll talk to you guys later. See you Thursday night for 